What exactly is a ship's lookout supposed to do? In Titanic's case, they were to reside in an area of the ship known as the Crow's Nest. Here, their job was to stand watch for four hours at a time and scan the horizon from left to right over and over again. If they encountered an object, whether that be an iceberg, a ship, anything, they were to notify the bridge and give them the approximate location of the object so that the officer of the watch could determine the appropriate course of action in case the ship needed to turn. So I've seen often in my video comments about if only they had had binoculars, they could have been able to see better, or maybe they should have had a spotlight on board. But here's the thing. On the night of April 14th, 1912, First Officer Murdoch turned off all of the forward-facing lights on the Titanic in order to give the lookouts more darkness to look into. So why would he do this? The answer can be explained easily by asking you a simple question. Have you ever went out at night and tried to look at the stars? What is a better location to see these stars from? Inside the city, where you have all of this ambient light messing with your eyesight, or out in the countryside, far away from city lights. You're able to see more of the stars in the countryside because you don't have ambient light messing with your night vision. This is why Officer Murdoch turned off all of the forward-facing lights that night on the Titanic. He wanted to give the lookouts the maximum opportunity to have their eyes adjusted to the night. That way they could see much clearer especially on a night where the sea was to be reported smooth as glass, which would make icebergs and other objects hard to see. So you can now get a sense from that description why it would be a very bad idea to have a spotlight on board the Titanic. Anything inside the cone, sure, would be able to be much more visible, but everything outside of the cone would be much, much darker. What happens if you're scanning a part of the horizon with the spotlight and the iceberg is off in your peripheral vision covered by darkness. You wouldn't be able to see it until you panned the spotlight over to shine on the berg. Also, depending on the intensity of the spotlight, if it was much further off than the spotlight's cone, you wouldn't even be able to see it at all. It would be completely dark. You run into a similar situation with the binoculars. Again, the lookouts are supposed to scan the entire horizon. The binoculars quite literally limit the amount that you can see. They cut off your peripheral vision. So unless you are looking directly at an object, you can't spot the object. Binoculars are used to discern or determine what an object is once it has already been spotted by your night vision, meaning no spotlight, no binoculars. So now with all of this knowledge, I'm going to ask you to play a little game. With the use of computer technology, I've set up three simulations for you. One, you're going to be standing in the crow's nest with no binoculars and no spotlight. Your job is to watch the three animations go by in turn. At the end of each animation, they're all 10 seconds long, I'm going to stop the animation and then highlight where the object is in front of the ship. Your job when you're watching these animations, put your finger on the screen and try and see just how right you are. You might want to allow your eyes to adjust to darkness before you view them. You may not. It might change your results. There are three animations for each situation. Three with no spotlight or binoculars. Three with a spotlight and three with the binoculars. Keep track of how many that you actually do spot, and keep track of how many that you miss. And then remember, some of these objects are placed directly in front of the ship. If you can't spot them, you might just run into an iceberg.